It's a beautiful day in Lombok, and that means it's a beach day. Good morning from Kuta, Lombok. Now when people talk about Lombok, they always say that it reminds them of Bali 25 years ago. I don't know if that's true because I haven't been to Bali yet, but I will say this, Kuta really reminds me of Tulum around 2010 before tourism got to become this Instagram, people looking for villas and smoothie bowls and well, all the things that people look for in Bali, I guess. But let me tell you, I love Lombok. And Kuta is really cool. It's like a surfing town, a beach town. You do have a lot of bule or gringo restaurants, but you also have a lot of local spots to eat. It's kind of a balance of both that still works. We're gonna do a road trip today to try to check out as many beaches as we can. I think it's gonna be a great day. Now, if you're watching this video and you're thinking, wait a minute, did I miss the Sengigi video? You did not. I actually didn't shoot anything there. So I went to Mataram, the capital of Lombok, had a great day eating traditional food. I actually really love that city too. I think it's very livable. But Sengigi was really quiet. The best thing about Sengigi was Azoka homestay where we stayed, but the actual town, there wasn't really a lot to do. The beach was okay. I heard there's a wildlife park, but I didn't really feel like it was worth sharing because I didn't really love it. The first beach that we're going to is only a 30 minute drive, and I believe it's the farthest beach. All right, so the best way to get around Lombok is definitely by scooter. I don't drive, fortunately, Alan does. In Kuta, you can get scooters. You can rent them for 50000 a day. We actually brought our scooter down from uh, Sengigi, which was 70000 a day. A bit more expensive. However, the reason why we did it was to get a shuttle from Sengigi down here it was going to cost 200000 to 300000 each way. So we even spending... 20,000 more a day is a better deal and the bike that we've got is the same one that Alan uses and we used it for a couple days and so we knew it was good. So it just kind of made sense to stay with what we've got and in the end actually we're going to save a lot of money because we didn't get it here. All right first stop is Salong Balanak, Balanak, Salong Balanak Beach. <laughs> first tourist like that. <laughs> Still not graceful, but I'm on the bike. What a beautiful day for the beach! So we made it to Salong Bellana to get in. It's 10,000 for parking. They do give you an official receipt. And I actually heard that most of the beaches here, there's a 10,000 entry fee. It's less than a dollar, so I have no problem with that. One of the reasons we wanted to come here was, although it's a surfing beach and not great for swimming, there are lots of local warangs. So warangs are um, small traditional places where you can eat local traditional food. Also for me, it's important to support the local economy. So when you come out here, you see actually there are lots of really great places to stay. So many beautiful ones. I don't know if they're all locally owned, but I think it's important as tourists that we seek those out. And the views here, wow. It looks pretty spectacular. Made it here. It is beautiful out. When we first got here, dark clouds, but this wind pushed it all away. So now we just have blue skies. This is a real fisherman's village. So these sampan fishing boats, they're here on one side of the beach. And then on the other side, you've got the warangs and apparently you can rent day beds. So we're going to check that out. This is a really popular beach. If you want to learn how to surf, there's a lot of people here. Waves are small, so it's good to learn here. And then also for those who are more well seasoned, who know how to surf, I think there are a lot of smaller beaches around here that they go to fewer amenities, but it's for people who are just here to surf and nothing else. But wow, what a gorgeous day to be exploring these beaches. All right, I have to say this is a great beach. It's windy, it's mostly for surfing. Not the best water for swimming if you're not a strong swimmer, but the sand here is beautiful. 
lots of amenities and I would say the prices are pretty good. About the same that you'll get in town, you can certainly eat for 30,000. I didn't check the price of beer, but the first person we talked to about the sun beds said it was 100,000 for two beds for the whole day. They don't do it by the hour. And then we went down to Jaffa Surf School and they said it was 50,000 for two beds for the whole day. So I would say if you're looking for a bed, just walk around. This place is not crowded, so you can definitely get a deal. So now we're on to the next beach. I think it's called Mawun, and it's supposed to be also nice white soft sands, but better for swimming. He's carrying my sarong as a head wrap. <laughs> As we talk about garbage here, I should mention a couple of things. Um, garbage on the beaches in Indonesia comes from a few reasons. In the mountains, on the hills, they don't have uh, garbage disposal, so a lot of people burn the garbage or it ends up in the rivers. If there's a lot of rain, which we've had in the last couple days, it actually comes down the mountain here. Also, I think that Indonesia does not have the same background of education about littering and garbage as if you are Gen X or a baby boomer. When I was growing up, Gen X, the worst thing you could do was to be a litter bug. So I don't think the same kind of education has happened here, but that is really a sense of privilege. If the worst thing as a white child growing up in Canada that could possibly happen to you was for you to be called a litter bug. So it's all in perspective and even more reason when we go places, when we are visiting as tourists that we are constantly saying, you know, no plastic, tampa pipet means no straw, and to be aware of what we are contributing to this because we can't just judge what's happening, but we at least have to be part of the solution. The nice thing is in Kuta actually, um, I've noticed that people are using metal straws, that they're using glasses, have not seen a lot of plastic, which is fantastic. Glasses. Alan forgot to buy some and so I've given him my straw hat and he's also using my sarong on his head which looks hilarious. On to the next beach I think Alan and I agree this is a 7 out of 10. I actually think I would bump it up to an 8 just because you do get that um, authentic fishing village. It doesn't feel too touristy. It's still very laid back at good prices. As he said, the plastic and the garbage is an issue, but I think that's really hard to get around around here. So all we can do as tourists is to encourage people and not add to the problem. Time to bring out the hat. It is beautiful here. I don't even think the camera will bring out just how vibrant and green the surrounding area is. It's gorgeous. It just, it feels very relaxed here. The only thing that doesn't feel relaxed are the kids selling bracelets. They are very cunning. They know what to say to you. And uh, strangely enough, the kids in Kuta in the town are pretty chill, maybe because they see more people, but they're not really aggressive. All right, so this place did have better prices and we like the beach down here, but we only plan on staying for like an hour. And so we didn't want to rent a chair and eat. So I think we're gonna go down to our original place. This kid is still happy. That other girl looks like she's like, buy my bracelet. It's so sad. Is he gonna try to sell them bracelets out there? He knows how to get people long-term to buy bracelets. Before we got lunch, we went in the water and this side of the beach, the water, you actually have to go down a hill. And I would say, it seems like the current might be a little bit stronger. It actually knocked me into the water and then pushed me back out. So I think after we eat, we're gonna go to a more flat section. 
but so happy with lunch. We got gado gado. It means mix mix. And basically it's usually noodles, vegetables, uh, tofu, sometimes chicken in a peanut sauce. I always ask for the peanut sauce on the side because I find some people have put too much peanut sauce. This one has rice. I was actually trying to avoid eating rice, which is why I got the gado gado, but no problem. There's lots of things. I am so excited to eat it because it also has lettuce, beans. We've got some chicken, some tempeh, egg, tofu. It's a very big meal and it was 35. So I think that's a good deal. We left going to the third beach a little bit too late and it actually got dark, so we decided to call it a day. So, last night it rained, really, really rained, and then this morning there was rain, puddles everywhere. But the day is getting much nicer, so I think it's gonna be a beach day. But before we go to our final beach, I'm going to take you to my favorite place to eat in Kuta. So because Kuta has become such a popular spot for tourists, in brings lots of tourist restaurants, so lots of bule restaurants. So there are a number of Mexican places, Italian, pizza, kebabs. You can kind of get a little bit of everything here, but I find when you eat foreigner food in a different country, it's not very good. So you're paying for a lot and it's not great. When we first got here, I saw Mexican and Alan has never had Mexican, so we stopped at a bule Mexican place not the Mexico that I remembered. They, valiant effort, valiant effort. It was kind of like Mexican, but not quite. And it was expensive. And so we found this spot across from the Athamart and they have nasi champur. And that is like uh, what you get with Wurtag and other places. So basically it's a glassed in area with lots of different bowls. You choose whatever food you want and then you pay for it. This for us yesterday when we ate here, two big dishes with iced tea, was 45,000. Now, if we had eaten somewhere else, it would have been like 100, 150. And we're eating local food, so it's fantastic. Lots of locals are coming in and out, getting you know food to go. I've got some spicy chicken, some green beans and carrots. I've got a little bit of tempeh, a little bit of tofu. I had this yesterday, it was so good, but it was spicy. Now, the tea that they have here is not iced tea, so I brought my own water. But the food was so good, it was so spicy. I kept eating it, but my mouth was on fire. Today I brought my own water. Mm. You can't go wrong with local food. It's always a hit. Tanjung on and actually Alan finally has sunglasses so that's great when you drive in here you can either go right and the entrance fee is 10,000 or you can keep going a little bit and it's 5,000 the interesting thing I don't mind paying entrance fees but the 10,000 entry fee it's very rustic so there's not a lot of amenities there and then this one which is 5,000 and has someone actually like watching your bike is 10 so I don't know why, but that's just kind of how it is. We decided to go to the one with a little bit more amenities. There are restaurants here. You can have a number of drinks. I think they've got some volleyball and something, so we're gonna go check it out. The surfing never ending, like my heart to you never ends. So cute. Also, if you're surfing here, it looks like they can do drone, GoPro, Canon. You can get your own little movie. When you first come in, there's just this little restaurant. They are from Lombok. Speak Lombok as well as Balinese and Bahasa Indonesia. And then these little uh, chairs that they have here, as long as you buy something, you can stay here for free. So if you go to Bali, I think they cost at least 50,000 for who knows how long. But here, if you're eating and drinking, you don't have to pay any extra and they are so sweet. Sun hasn't come out yet, but it's windy and the clouds are starting to move. So Alan was right. It is starting to get sunnier. The blue skies are coming out, but he said the wind will probably keep up. I don't know how Indonesians do it, but they just 
They know if it's going to rain by the air. I don't have that sense of the weather. But I will say this, this beach is gorgeous. The sand is so soft, it's beautiful. The water is also warmer than the other beaches that we were at. And so I think this is like a little bit like Goldilocks. This is the perfect mix of the first two beaches. So you've got the warm water, shallow, looks easy to swim in that we saw at the first beach where there were surfers. But then also there's just this, you know, Tang Jun means the sea between two hilltops. And so you have that scenery that we had at the second spot that we loved so much. It's really beautiful. I'm gonna wait for the sun to really come out to fly my drone because this water you can see is really this turquoise blue-green water. It also looks very clear. It was raining this morning, so it's not totally clear, but I'm hoping that sediment will, sand, will settle and we can start to see a little bit, maybe bring out the GoPro to see what's underneath because these guys are fishing, so there must be some fish. And if you're wondering about that other side that costs 10,000 to get in, you can actually walk the beach. It's just right down there, but you can see there's just a couple of shacks. So if you want a really peaceful get away from it all, nobody else is there, you can go there. But this is also really nice. There's no music, it's very quiet. New day, new gado gado. So you can mix it all together. That's how it's supposed to go. But I actually like to have just a little bits and then I use the sauce as a dipping sauce. This one doesn't have rice or noodles. Normally it comes with noodles, but I'm just happy to have uh, tofu, tempeh, potato, carrot, beans, bean sprouts, cooked cabbage, uh, hard boiled egg, and then we've got some tomato, some cucumber, and then these crackers which are blowing away, but there's a dog and he's happy for that to happen. Mm. For me, this is the perfect beach lunch. Mm. So good. And the day is now ending. We didn't have the most perfect day. It's been overcast for most of it, but it was still fantastic. In fact, it kind of gave me a reason just to lay under the palapa and enjoy myself and you know, not do much of anything. The water was fantastic. It's warm, the sand is soft and white. And we actually heard from other people that there are more beautiful beaches in Southern Lombok that we didn't have a chance to go to. And so that's another reason to come back. I really love this area. It's just so lush. The hillsides are so green. It's so peaceful here. So I would love to come back for a month or so and just stay outside the city and visit all of the beaches and tell you what the best one is. But I'm not so sad. This is not the last of my beach time. In fact, in the next video, I will see you in the Gili Islands. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.